Hello everyone and welcome to the support materials for multi-rate signal processing seminar 3 and this time we'll have a quick look at some interesting window functions using the scipy signal get window. So first we're just importing signal from scipy and importing numpy as np and here we have a very convenient function from scipy signal called get window that return a window of a given length and type. So it takes as a parameters the type of window to create, the number of samples in the window, the FFT beans is optional. So if true, it creates a periodic window ready to use the with the I FFT shift and be multiplied by the result of an FFT. If false, create a symmetric window for use in future design. And it returns a window of length and x and the type of window. So you can choose different window types and each of these windows can also be called separately, not using the get window. Just have in mind that some windows they need extra parameters. So if you choose to use the Kaiser, then it needs also to give the beta. If you use a Gaussian window, you need to give the standard deviation and so on. So if the window requires no parameter, no parameters, then the window can be a string. If the window requires parameters, then window must be a tuple with the first argument, the string name of the window and the next arguments, the needed parameters. So in our example, we are going to use here a general Gaussian. So a general Gaussian, you also need to pass the power and the width you can read more here. So it's the generalized Gaussian window defined here. And here we are creating our window. So we are calling this function get window. We're using general Gaussian, we're using power of one and the width of five. And our window will have 32 samples. And then we are using plotly express to plot this window. So we have here our 32 from samples from 0 to 31. We have our peak value amplitude equals to 1 when n is equal to 16. And this is how our generalized, our general Gaussian with power equals to 1 and width equals to 5 and 32 samples looks like. Well, it's not enough in our future design using the window method. We need to know a bit more than just how the window looks so we can check the frequency response and we use signal frac C to calculate the frequency response. And we have our array of um, frequencies and our array with our frequency response. So we're passing the window that we calculated from the get signal a signal get window function. We are giving the number of points we want to use. Here I am normalizing this frequency response because I want to, I'm interested in knowing where is the minus 3 dB frequency and it makes it easier to visualize it when we have a normalized frequency response and also I'm calculating some angles. So we have magnitude and phase plots and we are unwrapping these angles. So here we calculate the frequency response and now we will plot the frequency response in terms of magnitude and phase. So we are using Plotly again, but this time not Plotly Express. We are using the Plotly graph objects. So I'm creating a figure with two subplots, one row, one row in two columns, some subplot titles for each plot, one for the magnitude normalized and one for the phase. Then I'm adding a trace. So we are also normalizing our frequency to pi. So pi is going to be the Nyquist frequency. And we are also having here the absolute value of 
the age which is calculated here and we're taking 20 times log of 10 we're plotting using a scatter plot with the mode line so we have some line plots for the second trace we are also having some normalized frequency here so we have values from 0 to 1 and they are multiplied by pi pi is the Nyquist frequency again so we have this second trace which is the phase and we see here that we have unwrapped angles then just defining some titles for our axis so we have here omega so our frequency and these values here they are should be multiplied by pi because we are here are dividing by pi so we have values from 0 to 1 but it means that it's from 0 pi to 1 pi and then we have our magnitude normalized to 0 dB and here we have our phase in radians so now we can take a look and see for example if we zoom in here and we are interested to see where is the minus 3 dB point what frequency is the minus 3 dB we can check here so we have this minus 3.06 and it's at frequency 0 0.0537 times pi and this is very useful because when we design a filter using the window method we've seen already during Professor Schurer lectures that we need to know also what is the cutoff frequency what is the minus 3 dB frequency of our window and then we can decide which window to use so we know also the minus 3 dB point but we have here also this lobe that is giving an attenuation of minus 60 dB at 0 0.286 0 0.29 times pi so these are very important values that we need to understand when we are using windows so maybe this window is useful for some applications maybe not maybe you need to change some parameters and see how the window responds or maybe you need to change and use a different window that um, works for your needs so just an example let's have a power of 2 here and let's have a, a window even shorter so let's rerun this so now our window looks very different from before it's the same window but we have different parameters and let's see changes in frequency response so it's looking already completely different we have this side lobe here that's giving an attenuation of minus 19 it's very different from what we had before and our minus 3 dB it's more or less here at 0 0.125 pi so maybe this window now will not be so useful for certain applications but it can be useful for other applications so you can play around with powers and widths and see how it affects the shape of our window and also the frequency response in terms of magnitude and phase and then you can decide if you want to use this window or not so let's try here double dim so we have here now very high attenuation minus 200 dB at the 0 0.45 pi and our minus 3 dB is now around 0 0.053 times pi so this is very useful now that you can check how different windows with different parameters look like and what's the frequency response of this um, window in terms of magnitude and in terms of phase so you are required to use this function get window for our seminar assignment 
and you're required to design a filter for use together with downsampling and upsampling using the window method filter design. That's it for today and I see you in another opportunity.